This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. And welcome back. Week one of the Open Line Show. We're welcoming in 1466 Web Robotics coming out of Tennessee, uh, competing in week five and week six, Smoky Mountains Regional, the Rocket City Regional. Uh, you all got a long time till you compete here, so we can't wait to uh, uh, hear more about your team, what's going on. Won't the two of you introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do on the team, and of course, we'll dive into how your season's going so far. All right. I am Nicholas, and I'm the media lead on the team this year. And I'm Emily. I'm the build project lead. So looking at this game, I uh, just want to ask you, how excited are you for the Charged Up game? And uh, why don't you tell us about some of your first initial thoughts, and we'll talk about uh, some of the stuff uh, that you want to show off here today. See, at kickoff, I feel like a lot of teammates were not as excited as I was. I was really excited, I think, just because of how our team looks this year, yeah. how many people that are really excited about the game. I like the, I love the game pieces. I love that they're purple and yellow. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about Charged Up. I think it'll be fun, and at first it didn't look too challenging, but now that we've done and looked at our prototypes, it's proving to be a lot harder than I think I initially thought that it would be. So yeah, I'm excited to see how it plays out in the end. Cool. So why don't you tell us what you've been uh, working on here, and of course uh, we have some, uh, I know we have some CAD drawings, some other things to show up on screen, kind of uh, reel us into what, what's been going on over at Web Robotics. Yeah, so uh, we're in this really awesome facility that was just finished in 2020. And we share it with our FLL FTC and obviously our FRC team. We've got like a few drill presses. We got a Glowforge printer last year that we've been taking advantage of. And that those two things, the 3D printer, the CNC, and the Glowforge all make prototyping really easy and efficient for us. Like we've been able to make our prototypes much faster now that we have these. And then our space also houses all three of our first teams, which makes um, mentoring in between the teams really easy and accessible so our members from our team can go and help our lego league team which is set up like right behind the camera over there yeah but in terms of what we're working on we're probably going to bring in our chassis here um we have decided to you know, do swerve drive this year after getting some off-season work in which was is the first time our team has ever done swerve and we weren't sure that this game was going to allow for it but once we saw it kick off we really thought the swerve was going to be super advantageous for us and our off-season work did pay off. We have a, a drivable sort of chassis. So we usually use um, a kit apart chassis and we do a lot of different configurations with that. And that's what we've been doing for a very long time. And so this off-season, we decided to try it out and try Swerve and invest in that. And it actually went pretty well for us. And we finally have a working drive Swerve chassis that we've been coding this um, throughout this week a lot. And so we've been messing around with the cam coders, which we recently got plugged in. And we have been experiencing a little bit of drift with those. So we decided to go back to the um, the sensors that are already in the Falcons. Yeah. You wanna bring the chassis? Yeah. Uh, I want to want to ask you guys real quick on on the sword drive. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you guys uh, did it during the off season and we started it out there because, uh, yeah, you know, I, I Greg, I don't know about you, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the team starting out with the sword drive with no experience going into the build season, right? So, and Weber Box, I'm not sure if you would agree with that as well, but I'm, I'm happy to hear that you've done that, and I can't wait to uh, have you tell us more about this uh, sword drive. No, we we knew that we had to do sort of an off season at least just to try and get some experience to meet some people. We had some kids um, on the team super excited about just building the modules. And that enthusiasm helped a lot. And I think that's part of why we went with this and decided to go with this chassis for the game this year, because we had so much enthusiasm on the Steam that we thought we could really channel that into a robot. I feel like a lot of the designs we end up sticking with are really backed by enthusiasm and Swerve is no different. Mm -hmm. so. so a few years ago, we also started yeah, with see. these um, for the, can, for the can wires, we started with these new um, 
adaptive, like adaptive type things. So instead of like having to clip wires and stuff, all we have to do is simply plug the wires in and they clip together. So I just made this whole process of wiring everything so much easier. So that's been really nice. So it looks like your chassis is uh, really, really small. So what are the dimensions overall of your chassis? Yes. So that one is, is it 24? It's 21 by 21. That one is a 21 by 21, but I think our plan for our actual robot is to be 26 by 26. So we're going with a pretty small robot that can move around the field pretty easily. And also fit on that charge station easier, especially if we're trying to fit two, um, maybe, three, maybe robots. three robots. A small drive chassis is definitely ideal and what we're sticking to this year. That's part of our strategy. Our right. only problem with that chassis is that we don't have enough Falcon 500 motors to make a backup robot, and this is the first time since 2014 that we won't have one. But we're going to make do with what we have, and we have a few backup um, motors, but just not enough to make two full uh, robots. So that's our only thing. Um, so t tell us a little bit about your, your overall game strategy. So, I mean, um, what, what are you trying to accomplish, and how are you – how are you going to use that swerve or to, to do your, your game strategy? Yeah, so at kickoff, we made a wish prefer demand um, and like a no list that uh, cons all of our demands are really what we're considering in when we're building like a version one robot. And since we have those games in week five and week six, we've made, leaders have made a lot of deadlines that we're really trying to stick to to keep ourselves on task and not rushing to the last minute because that's we know that's not going to work for us if we don't keep that and so strategy includes like cones we really wanted to manipulate cones we felt like that could be something that we can focus on in first iteration robots the scoring um, low scoring mid but also really focusing on charge station which we know we can accomplish with good programming and we know that our programming team can handle that kind of prototyping and not that kind of programming in, to ensure that we can balance one or two robots on the charge station, which was a good for us. So moving on to some of our intakes that we decided, this was, so we haven't decided what intake that we're going to go with yet, but we just have a couple prototypes that we'd like to like show off and show what we've been working on recently. So this is one of the first ones that we came up with. So we're using these um, two inch compliant wheels and we just, one of these, will be um, motorized, and so it can just roll in and over this cone and pick it up, and then also shoot it out pretty easily. Yeah. So this did a good job. And we tested a bunch of different um, wheels, and we figured out that these two inch ones were the best. So I, I do want to ask on the acquisition of that cone with that with that uh, intake they have. So do you have to go essentially right over the cone uh, for it, or will, or will it be at an angle? How's, how's the actual approach work uh, for that type of intake? So we've been playing a little bit with it, and I think we found that the best way is to go straight down because if it's at an angle, it just it's a lot harder to do. We might have to figure out some way to be able to like tip over the cone so that way we can get it from straight on. Because I we didn't really see many other efficient ways to do this when it was rotated other ways. So, yeah, and then it would obviously this would be attached to an arm of some sort that came out of the robot to pick it up. Okay. So you're prioritizing uh, cones with that intake. Um, are you doing anything with the cubes also? So that was one of our intake ideas. I don't know if we're going to stick with it, um, but we're definitely considering that. I we're, Since we're prioritizing cones in our first intake robot, we were leaving room to be able to make different grabbers or like, um, pickup mechanisms that can do both cones and cubes. So this was another one of our prototypes for our cones. Or really anything. So this would have a motor attached to it. And we recently decided to continue going with this one. Originally, I think we, this was one of our original ideas, and we weren't sure if we were going to go with it, but we decided to prototype this. And then these parts were also cut with our laser cutter, or our laser cutter, these little. You can see these, yeah. these are make, this is like marker board material, um, just from Home Depot cut using our laser cutter, yeah. very quick prototype. Yes, and that's, it's been really helpful doing this. And it's in several of our prototypes, you'll see laser cut stuff, which is really nice. And then these are, these little foam pieces came in our kit of parts too. So we were putting that to this as well. Yep. So, that one we used to be pretty useful as well. All right. 
Yeah, this is one of our other prototypes that we considered. I think uh, this one we called it like Sucky's Team Suck. Uh, we used like a uh, motor here, and it was actually more successful at grabbing the cons than the cubes. But the reliability of this one kind of might discour uh, discourage us from choosing it. Uh, our drive team and our programming team isn't too keen on some of our intake ideas right now just because of how much driver control they require. And building something that is like has a wider range, like grabbing range or easier on the drive team is definitely something that we're considering in order to just be able to score a lot of points. Because that was one of our season goals, being more aggressive, having a higher OPR, um, being picked at both of our regionals in, to play in finals. Those were all things that were really looking out for this year. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, that's it's a really important consideration, right? So, I mean, it, it seems like you're well on your way with a whole bunch of different prototype ideas on intake, but uh, you do have to listen to your drivers and your programmers, uh, especially if you want a, uh, a sweet auton. So, um, so, so all different kind of considerations, but it's really cool to see that you've kind of gone through different, the gauntlet, whether it's the roller intake or the, the claw to, to even the vacuum stuff that not a lot of teams even play with. So pretty cool to see the diversity in what you guys have been working on. Yeah, if we want to quickly show off the CAD that we have so far, um, um, that'd be good. And in, in this CAD, you'll see kind of the lifter system that we, we originally on just because uh, we, so it, the lifter that you see on that CAD right now is a virtual four bar. And that we've seen, we really gravitated towards because one of our like prefers was floor pickup, but this hits most of our demands and also hits prefers. It's really reliable, really, really sturdy. Uh, we built up the prototype over the weekend, and the um, CAD people, prototype people, people really got out of this idea. Um, we're going to show the prototype we have here that you can see um, on the CAD screen right now. But that would be able to score um, mid pretty successfully, and we can also attach a cube mechanism, cube grabbing mechanism that we can use. Wow. Here's you, this you, is, yeah, <laughs> I am. I am impressed at the speed that your team is able to do this. So this is, this is a uh, quite the. I was not expecting there to be the like the. Oh, let me hear. Let me hear our full arm show up on the table. But it's it's cool that you see it. Yeah, this is the first time that we've really been able to do this this quickly, and it's good that we the deadlines have helped us a lot. In this For sure, those are some like, massive sprockets. By the way, were those done on your laser cutter <laughs> as well? These are um, not. No. These are just parts that we have. Yeah, no, these we did not laser cut. But we like making so many prototypes that we can kill them off. Um, when, and I think we're going to show one more lifter grabber prototype. This one we dubbed Gary. Um, for, Gary. Gary the Snail for very obvious reasons. Love it. Uh, this is an I guess energy chain that's really beefy. And we uh, made a gear that would take um, this I guess chain, lifts it up, and we were planning on putting this into the single substation and having a human player place a cone, um, use a gear, and bring it back into um, the snail position. But um, this design, it was slow. It wasn't really that. Um, our drive team wasn't happy with the speed of it. Uh, the chain is very prone to like falling in on itself. So this uh, design, we kind of gave it a salute this weekend and said goodbye to it. But we appreciate Gary. And if we make him to Worlds, we might bring him home. Guys, you know how disappointed I am to hear that that's not going to make it on your robot, by the way. Were the folks who designed this one on an, on any FTC teams, by chance? Um, I don't know. We actually were... I, I get where you're going, we yeah. by Texas Torque last year. Their climber, uh -huh. um, seven, uh, 1477, their climber used this to bring the climber hooks up. They used their winch system to hold the... Uh, weight of the robot, but this was seen on the team. Uh, we were talking about it on kickoff, and we it made it to our lab, and we played around with it. Um, probably not going to see it on our robot. Maybe in the future, the Sagis chain will sit in the lab. So we'll see. What Super we'll cool. I, my, my only my only thing is that I feel like you've got to give like you know the little Gary the snail no, and, like, you know, decorations to it. We would we would make him very Gary for sure. The so Very Weber cool. Box, we do only have like a minute or two left with you uh, this evening. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to cover or anything uh, that you want to talk about looking forward to the next few weeks as well before we see you next? I mean, 
that was mostly it. We, um, we're we super excited. I think our six-person leadership team has a lot of energy behind it. Um, and we just have good team engagement. We have more people reading the rules. We have super well-organized, successful kickoff that a lot of our mentors were saying was the best kickoff this team has ever had, awesome. which is super inspiring to everyone. Um, we also have a lot of underclassmen this year in our team, which is really good. So it'll help the next generation come in. Through, through this team, and we can help them and learn, help them learn everything that they need to learn that we've all learned in the past couple of years. A lot of our work right now is making sure we pass on that knowledge, but um, we're, we're all learning so much. It's just a really good time in the lab, and we're excited to be back in three weeks to share a lot of great updates. Yeah, we can't wait to see where those updates are, are going to be, and of course, can't wait to see uh, how Gary evolves over the next uh, three weeks as well, too. So, uh, Weber Box, <laughs> thank you so much for, for taking the time, and uh, can't wait to see you in, uh, in three more weeks. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you for having us tonight. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.